Is it working? Yes. Thanks for having me here. Um, my name is Manuel from Grayscale Publishing. Uh, I will actually talk tomorrow morning. Uh, this will be my regular talk at 10, 10 a.m. something. But I was very, very impatient, so I um, subscribed for this lightning talk. It will be dedicated to the um, Scribus community. So I hope they are arriving. Any Scribus programmers here? Yes? Only one? Well, so a little bit of boring introduction, and so they will see just the, the actually important part. Um, this will be a short presentation of my most important feature request. As a designer, as a graphic designer, working with uh, Libre Software, what would be the most uh, kick-ass killer feature that would improve my workflow tremendously? Now, um, I'm making three assumptions on which I base this uh, request. They are, first um, assumption, many graphic designers, especially working with Libre Software on uh, various platforms, know a bit about the basics of the CSS style sheet language. In the future, more and more of them will know about it, the younger generation of designers. And uh, third assumption, most of the text styles we used to apply, like bold, underline, padding here and there, on top, on the bottom of the paragraph and so on, have an equivalent in CSS or will have in the future and will be maybe superseded by it. So, based on that logical conclusion, what we want to see in a uh, graphical user interface is a code view where you can see the raw code of your style. We are almost there in Scribers actually. So this is um, an example of this uh, layout software and here you have the window where a style is defined. You have a number of properties and here I have a style which is named underlined and actually the only thing that I defined uh, manually is the underline thing. If you have a look at the source code of the Scribus file, which is an uh, XML format, a bit like um, the, the stuff that uh, Julien talked about this morning with Inkscape, you can see the, the code, the source code, XML, it's readable, and if you know where to look, you can find actually the style that we defined. It looks like that. It has a few parameters. One of them is underline, Okay, um, it doesn't define a size, it doesn't define a typeface, that's what I can see here. But uh, strangely in the user interface there is a font and there is a, um, a size. Actually this is not defined in this style, it's inherited from the default style. So actually this user interface is making things more complicated than either, than needed and what happens even worse if I define a font now, let's say I change the font family to the beautiful Chivo, which is the font of this presentation, then I see, okay, it's now defined in my code, but I cannot remove it anymore. I cannot undefine it, uh, or I would go through some very complicated process. I don't know if it's possible. There is no um, workflow for that. So what would be beautiful, really beautiful, would be a code view, a very simple window, where you see exactly the same thing as in the source code, the parameters that are in the style. So one, I would know what is there, and two, I can remove what I don't want. Without a complicated interface, very simple, and very familiar to people who know a bit web design. And what would be really, ni really nice would be if the syntax would get as close as possible to CSS, like it would understand some CSS stuff. And I think it makes sense for the future as well. As we have uh, heard yesterday during uh, one talk, um, Print design and electronic book design will merge at some point, very certainly the workflows will be very close. Um, this software Scribus actually already does in, ex in the development versions, HTML export, import, EPUB export is on the works. So there, has, there is already transformation. So it makes sense to do it, I think. Thank you. So, as we have four uh, talks, uh, I take two questions. Anyone? Question, should this be done? Yes. <laughs> there. So, in the first minute of the talk, all the Scribus guys here arrived. So, it's not that bad situation. <laughs> and they all agree, I think, with you. 
So do you need to show the first slide again? Um, I think a code view would be the wrong answer to a, to a real problem. So I think it should be like the dialogue should be improved so it uh, better tells you what is defined and what not defined and also tells you if there is an undefined property there. So there is some mismatch also between the underlying styling engine and the uh, and the UE for editing styles, so that, that should be improved. Yeah. And uh, my personal idea for the future would be to um, probably go to CSS, XML plus CSS internally anyway. So, but, uh, well, I have been very inactive for the last half year, so it's nothing happening, unfortunately. So, can you answer the question, is, is would better interface to the, the style definition be the answer to your question? Um, I don't believe so. I, I think you can make it more complicated, but you cannot really make it much more simple. And on the other hand, you cannot make it more simple than that. So, I think this would be genuinely useful. And also, it would be a, a feature that doesn't exist in, propri in proprietary software I know of, which have the same problems, actually. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Manuel. So, another question. Hello. Buenos dias. Um, si uh, tiene uh, al alguna pregunta um, en español, es ok, uh, pero hablo en inglés. Um, so I'm from OSP, the, the band over there uh, sort of centered around Brussels, group of designers um, doing um, design, graphic design, media design uh, with uh, free software only, uh, also redistributing our own work under free licenses um, and today um, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, the problems we have sharing our work um, and all among each other and to the uh, wider uh, audience at large. I'll, I'll first show you um, sort of the before. So something really powerful that we learned from the free software movement is that basically the tools we use to work together are also uh, the same tools um, we uh, use to uh, but, uh, share our uh, work with a larger community. So we work uh, putting all our files in, a Git repos in Git repositories that have uh, public access and an interface to browse them, to look at what's in there. This like, for example, you can uh, browse through all the code on GitHub and see who is working on a project and what people are doing without being involved uh, in any way in this, in this project. And this is a really nice way of sharing because people are using these tools to work together in a group and at the same time already opening up the work for everybody who would be interested in either working together on a project or reusing uh, projects. Um, so here we see the Git server of Constant, uh, the arts organization in Brussels, like similar to Media Lab Brado here, um, where we have OSP projects and also projects of other groups related to Constant. And here already immediately we see something very particular. This interface is quite texty, so to say. Um, so if, if we go to one of our works, for example, uh, like I saw, um, so so this is a, a, an example of of a, of, a, of, a, of a project we're working on, which has all our projects have many different kinds of media. So, for example, we might uh, we might have our um, we might 
download images to uh, as a for inspiration we might have for this I don't think we we but we might have like Scribus files Inkscape files we might have a, a, a Django project in there we have typefaces um, let's see I uh, may be better to show a project with a bit more different uh, different kinds of work in there like also workshop like the workshop we did for Mertz, what was this called? Um, hmm? Oh, okay, that's right. Um, workshop, morphologic. We work with an Amer a native speaker of the American, at ah, two minutes. So, uh, oh, that means I have to be very, uh, so you see, for example, an OTF file in here, um, but there's Python files and this is where these interfaces sort of are really happy because they're meant to actually just show this stuff. Um, so it's really inaccessible to people who know nothing of, of our workflow because they're like, what's a SLA file? Is that like a recipe for salad or what's going on? <laughs> I'm really bad at jokes. Like Um, so we try to visualize this and this is basically the same kind of view. You see a different project we work on. You see the git uh, commits. So the, when we added new things to our, uh, to, to our, uh, to our repositories. Uh, this is a really nice because this is, a, uh, this, is a, this is a funding application. It shows. So now we are browsing through the repository. And now we see, for example, we have actually visualized the different parts of it. So we see this is a PDF, um, and we already see a little preview for the PDF. And we can also load it up bigger, but the screen is a bit small. Now we see a bigger preview of the PDF. So basically, this is um, one minute. So, so basically, what we did is we made these kind of previews for images, for fonts, uh, and for PDFs. And for, uh, for 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 SVGs, um, and we would like to go further still in uh, in making also the diffs, so seeing the changes because that's really important. So you, what happens what within each step, um, and our code we separate it really cleanly into an API and into the OSP website, so the underlying project can be re can be built on, and we are really really. Uh, looking forward to hearing of people interested and in working with other people. We won't, unfortunately, be at the, um, what's the name of the project? Interactivos. Um, but we are very interested in people who during this time want to know more about this project or hack on it or maybe reuse it for their uh, uh, own uh, uh, goals. So please do uh, reach out. Thank you. So one question. Anyone dares? If I say two questions, does, is that easier? No questions. Okay. Well, they're all around, so no. Oh, please. No, really, question. no questions. Come yes. on, guys. Hi. Are you considering adding uh, some sort of way to comment on? Uh, on the changes and everything, I think that would be a really uh, that would be a really useful uh, feature to to do that uh, because uh, it's also it makes it more of a collaboration tool also. Like you did a comment and say, hey, but why did you do that? And then it's not just a conversation we have when we are at the same desk in Brussels, but you can work better. Um, but uh, we haven't really found what's the most straightforward way you could. You could have it in a database next to it, or you could try and really do it with a Git native object, like a Git uh, commentary. Uh, but it's really something that we'd be really interested in, in having, yes. Okay. This is a, oh. this is a talk about the new project of the Krita and Krita Foundation called Muses. And First of all, I'm going to present myself. 
I am Ramon Miranda. I am a professional illustrator. Um, this is my nick, the sock, and I usually on IRC by the Ramon and Nick. So if you want to talk with me, then you can do it. My role in, in free uh, license open source applications is to make resources and to make video training and tutorials because uh, not every every people don't know how to how to use the, the software. Um, the community needs a good uh, documentation and tutorials to teach all those people to understand uh, how to manage with how to use the programs to create the, the art. I uh, also use my own artwork to promote the open source use, and that's all. And the Crypto Foundation, you will have uh, uh, another talk with, with both, which is speak uh, better and explains better with what is the Crypto Foundation. But basically, it's a foundation to develop free graphics software, especially Krita, and to provide services for users and developers of Krita and to provide artists and studios with everything they need to create digital art. This is the project, this is the, the cover and study on color study to, to present you the, the project which is called uh, Music. This is uh, what I want to teach you uh, to make uh, evocative images, um, the techniques you use that uh, you need to, to understand and to manage to make this kind of of image. Um, the DVD covers two different aspects, which is uh, the theory and the seed in action. And then uh, we, we study, uh, just for example, the, the essentials and the interface and how to use the, the dockers in a proper way to get a, a good workflow and understanding the capacity of Krita to manage uh, brass engines separately and in a modular style and also the common things like layer, mask and the C in action uh, is the uh, practical side of the DVD which is based on basic exercises to understand better uh, what are we, we learning uh, just like sketching techniques and why we sketch it this way and what is inside our minds when we are sketching, like brainstorming, and use the values and mood to create a good atmosphere, and the typical face elements like eyes, noses, and lips, and this kind of stuff, and of course props like jewelry, and metals, and this kind of things. Uh, much more, just the icons for presets to, to use in, inside Krita, the final images in, in the native format for Krita and a setup of, of presets that I used on the on the DVD. And of course your name on, on the credits to be uh, a bit fun. This is the, the Krita interface and you can see it can be uh, a bit uh, complex if you if you get out all the all the dockers. But we can simplify just to, to understand how the interface works, um, difference uh, the parts, and, and explain in depth uh, what does each part. The goal for this DVD is to, to teach you uh, characters, design, and atmosphere, um, just uh, from scratch to the, to the final piece. Um, seeing all the all the process to create uh, finance finance uh, artwork and also the brainstorming process, which I think is uh, important because uh, usually we we see a lot of finished images, but we don't see the the process, and this is one of the on the main parts. And uh, this is two optional covers for the for the DVD two images which are not finished in the in the in the image so you can see the the finished images I have to done <laughs> have to do it and this is the the interface that I, that I plan for for the DVD I think the the simpler the better and 
it's clean just to, to teach you the principles by by videos and, and pop over text that I think is going to be uh, really easy to, to understand. This is not a project to, that you have to, to wait a long time. We have uh, only two months to be released in, in Academy, so I have to be in a hurry. And you can pre-order now. Uh, how much is this DVD? Well, this DVD has a special price. Um, we already have 50 pre-orders in, in a week, which is uh, really cool. Um, it's less than a pair of pants, uh, 50 euros, and it's cheaper than a puppy. So, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, questions? Questions, yes. Dog, anyone? So, order the DVD, no? no? Yeah, order Thank the DVD. You. <laughs> Very much. Hola. Hola. So, we are other pieces of OSP. Here are Pierre, Stephanie, and I'm Ludy. And we would like to present you one of the work we are currently working on. Um, this uh, is a collaboration with a theatre uh, based in Brussels. So here you can see the, the facade of the building. And so we, we work for, with this theatre, with uh, the, 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 the two directors of this theatre uh, from three years now. And we work uh, in there, we work with them in the theater itself. So um, we made a logo. So this is uh, the, um, a play kind of mise en beam <laughs> of uh, old pieces of the previous logo they had. You can, we, we customized some fonts for this, like the logo is included into the the, the boot of the bee in the, in the uh, Yume font we customized. We made some posters. We played with graphics. Graph. We also draw flyers. Posters again. And the program, uh, this one was made in Scribus. Uh, we forgot to put the first one, which was made in context. Uh, this is a stamp to patch some uh, uh, SVG uh, standards uh, incompatibility from uh, multi-line Inkscape text. Uh, is not uh, embedded in, in Scribus when we import an SVG, so the stamp is there for us for to repair this. This is a website with uh, image magic scripting. Uh, every year we uh, cook some uh, new script to, to alter the images. A new version of the website. This is um, a kind of fanzine or semi-program made in the LibreOffice calc, uh, which was quite an uh, adventurous <laughs> experience. <laughs> This is a tunnel, a summer tunnel to dive into a new season of last year. Uh, we work also every year with a letter painter who um, uh, beautifully interprets the Yume font uh, by hand uh, on the wall of the Balsami. So we used a hell of uh, tools in those two years and uh, now, what to use? <laughs> yes, because you see, maybe these uh, four ones uh, on the um, on the left are the ones we use for finalize uh, to lay out at, at the end. Um, most of the PDF we have put are finalized in Scribus, some, um, and uh, it's in, an opportunity to thank everyone involved in these tools. To, do, to have done it, because we use it a lot. Um, but for the new, for the third year, we want to do something around parallel universe, 
a kind of manga style uh, booklet, something quite heavy, maybe more than 100 pages, and um, uh, this kind of, of drawing of it. Uh, we want something quite fluid or something liquid in the way it's the, the mix of pictures and, and typography uh, can, yes, can literally flow through the pages. So we also begin to lay out it with scribes in this case. But we end up with some fluidity problem, liquidity problem. Uh, and because as, yes. Yeah, we can say uh, thanks to Claudia and Manuel because this lightning, lightning talk is really, we, we had the idea to do it because of their talk, so. Yes, it's, it's clearly a kind of answer or, or testimony to Claudia and, and a different approach from Manuel. We, we live in the same apartment, so yesterday evening we were discussing, ah, okay, you do, you will do something about it. Um, and because we, we have learned or we are learning uh, HTML plus CSS, uh, we say, okay, let's do it that way. Of course, it's the mess to, at some point. But if we list all the issues, uh, it seems to be possible. We are just at the beginning of the process, but um, yes, there is text flow now uh, in multiple ways, but the CSS region is a good candidate. Uh, the PDF output is seem quite clean with WebKit. And we have to try with Blink. You have to enable, I mean, Ludivine will show you. Uh, RS images are okay if you cheat a bit. Pagination could be added through the, PD, the final output uh, on PDF, but maybe other ways also, mm -hmm. through directly in CSS. Image flow, you can, it's what we call to say that uh, it's cutted and CMYK images, we will find ways. So we, we will show you just uh, an experiment where it's just the beginning, so we are trying and playing with the CSS uh, and flowing stuff. And we have a lot of, um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> of fun doing this. And <laughs> but so, we can already say that uh, if you are uh, experiment with this, and we, we are really curious about uh, uh, some help because we, we already imagine we will have some problems and but what what is interesting to show is the the webkit uh, flex so did you show how to enable this no. it could be nice so to this feature is uh, not available on um, every browser so uh, we can use it on chromium and for this you have to enable this um, this, this feature, so we can show you how to do this. It's quite... You have to look for WebKit because it's quite a long page of explaining uh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so what's nice in when... See the, the picture really flow into the different blocks, and you can uh, stretch the the boxes. Uh, this not so amazing to see, but we are really excited about this. Yes, it's amazing. As a, as a designer point of view, it's <laughs> okay, we can. So that's maybe an answer to the liquidity that we were discussing yesterday. The beginning of an answer. That's it. At, uh, at this point, uh, we will work on it tomorrow and Sunday. We take two questions, and I take the honor to ask one. <laughs> so, how do you go to print from this? Print. We, we will do a PDF, we will tune it, and we will give it to the printer, basically. But the thing is that, for example, this flex feature, when you export it, it's 
Yeah, we can we can try here live, but then it's out of the boxes. <laughs> Everything is. But the, the flowing um, uh, is okay. Okay. Questions. No questions. Okay. Seriously? <laughs> no questions. Okay. That's all right. Thank you very much for an exciting Thank you prospect. To you. <laughs>